Thank you guys. Thank you. Do you guys believe in climate change? No. no. Mainstream media tell us that climate change is real, but they also tell us that Islam is the religion of peace. So I don't know what to believe. <laughs> My comedy coach told me, always open with your least controversial joke. He also told me, stop saying Islam is violent or one of them might kill you. <laughs> I'm trying to read the room. Do you guys like nation states? Yes. I don't have time for segues, by the way. Uh, segue is an Italian word. Um, that's our contribution to stand up. Although we don't have we don't have stand up in Italy, mainly because the weather is nice outside. Uh, so talking about nation states, in this country, some people say I am British. They introduce themselves as British, and some people introduce themselves as English, and some people introduce themselves as citizens of the world. <laughs> and these people are assholes. <laughs> By the way, in my experience, they're actually never from the world. They're usually from um, Moswell Hill or <laughs> some other cesspit of white guilt. You <laughs> You know the type. I have inherited a beautiful house in Moswell Hill, and I feel guilty about it. So for my atonement, let us open the floodgates of low-skilled immigration so working-class white people who didn't have a house to start with can suffer even further. Working-class white guys like, what the hell did I do? You know what you did. <laughs> Waving the English flag when there was no football tournament. <laughs> That's true. English people are not allowed to show any patriotism unless there's a football tournament going on. <laughs> the rest of the time, they have to be self-deprecating. That's why there was so much pressure on their football team. The Italian team, no pressure. Because the Italians do not use their football team as a vehicle of patriotism. They don't need it. They are in your face with their patriotism, right? We don't even have a word for self-deprecation. The Italians have been consistently pleased with themselves ever since they invented civilization. Thank you. You're welcome. But in England, every bragging rights has been withdrawn, OK? It's politically incorrect. The English cannot brag about uh, the Industrial Revolution, because it was not carbon neutral. Uh, and it was done by white men, of course, like any good thing. Uh, they cannot brag about their empire, because it involved a lot of road building. Again, not carbon neutral. And it was done by white men. And some of these white men, let's face it, they had controversial, questionable, sometimes abhorrent ideas and beliefs. OK, let's, let's, let's be honest. Cecil Rhodes. Pioneer of British colonialism. Remarkable man. Cecil Rose, whose statues are under threat across the length and breadth of this great <laughs> kingdom. He believed that actually not every woman has to be believed. I, I'm as appalled as you are. But he believed in a different era, different century. We cannot apply our modern moral compass to people of previous centuries. Cecil Rose, this character, genuinely believed that some women are capable of lying. Can you believe this guy? It gets worse. He believed that female prime ministers do not make good Brexit negotiators. And he also believed, this character, that Afghanistan cannot stand on its own feet without Western support. Patronizing. So because of Cecil Rose and his outdated, outrageous opinions, now British people cannot focus on the good things they have given to the world. It's all negative. Because let's face it, the British have also given the world some terrible inventions. Terrible, terrible British inventions like Jane Austen. <laughs> Beach arcades. <laughs> and worst of all, Pakistan. <laughs> Nobody said this was going to be easy, guys. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. Um, now, I don't care what anybody says. I think the Taliban are bad. <laughs> no, I was so sad about the sudden rise of the Taliban. Uh, but get this. 
later, I saw a tweet <laughs> of a Western lady in the t-shirt which said, I've had 21 abortions. And suddenly, I don't hate the Taliban that much. <laughs> I mean, talk about silver linings and everything. But apparently, we have an ongoing obligation to the people of, uh, of Afghanistan. You know, this girl in Kabul was on Twitter. She's like, oh, I used to be a model. I used to be an Instagram influencer and all, all other these things that 95% of my countrymen do not agree with. And now, without Western soldiers, I will have to be trapped in my house. Girl in Nigeria says, my sisters were kidnapped by Boko Haram. I have already been trapped in the house. Girl in Haiti is like, bitch, I wish I had a house. <laughs> a hurricane, an earthquake, everything took it away from me. What's up with that? OK, I'll leave you with this. Please laugh quickly. My time is so short. <laughs> mm. Germany's Germany's women's gymnastics team, they have ditched their leotards for unitards. Now they are covering all the legs all the way to the ankles to combat objectification of women. So for you perverts who were hoping to watch their long, bare, supple legs, it's pretty much bad news. However, if you were hoping to look at their camel toes, it's business as usual. But, but listen, listen, listen. Listen up, guys. Objectification of women is no laughing matter. In this day and age, we can no longer allow the patriarchy to tell women what to do with their bodies. It is up to less attractive women <laughs> to tell other women what to do with their bodies. OK, my time is up. This went uh, seriously better than it did in uh, Goldsmith University campus. <laughs> I think a civil society is about agreeing on basic ideas. And the basic idea tonight is that maybe I should have been given a longer stage time. Thank you very much.